So yesterday we we're trying to compile a list, this list, the list of emails and phone numbers of all the major oil marketers so that we can send an email to them to give us feedback on whether or not they received full subsidy from 2016 till 2023. As I was preparing that list, the list was ready. In fact, we have drafted the, drafted the email just about sending the email when I got a message from a friend of mine. And when I opened the message, what I saw really shocked me and annoyed me. Because when we we're talking about the fact that there was no need for whole, this whole first subsidy removal in the first place, many people, many people were calling us all kinds of names. And if you go into the mainstream media space, what you hear is so-called oil and gas experts that appear to be paid to come and start talking about how first subsidy was unbearable for government to bear, that government could no longer sustain it. And in fact, every time I heard this, I was always annoyed because from the documents that we, ex we obtained about the DSDP arrangement, we knew, and that was when we came out and said that there was no full subsidy payment and that NMPC had not paid any subsidy to anybody. Yet, the Tinubu administration kept insisting that subsidy had to go. And we kept insisting, if there was no fuel subsidy in the first place, if the whole fuel subsidy regime was a fraud, what is the whole point of increasing the pump price of fuel? to deal with a forced subsidy that was a fraud. What is the point? If the forced subsidy did not exist in the first place and some people were collecting money in the name of forced subsidy and they were coming out openly according to what the former governor of Bauchi State st said, they were coming out in the Asso Rock Villa to meet President Buhari to say that they were tired of making money, of stealing Nigeria's money. That he should remove first subsidy if they knew that the first subsidy did not exist and people were just raising invoices to collect foil subsidy if they knew that that was the case how is increasing the pump price of petrol to make life difficult for average nigerians how is that foil subsidy removal when what should have been done would have been to go after those that were collecting the first subsidy fraudulently to return the monies that they have collected that would have been the solution but we're not looking in that direction i was determined to make sure that we got to the bottom of it and exposed everybody that was involved in the forced subsidy regime we have done a list a compilation of their email contact email addresses and then their phone numbers so we're going to call and also send them an email and if you don't respond to the email we're now going to we also did a compilation of the addresses. We're going to send them hard copy letters, after which we're going to take them to court. Because we wanted to get to the bottom of it. So what did we do? Right at the point where we're about to send the emails was when I got this message about a probe by the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating the subsidy regime payments from 2013 to 2022 has just has said that the profiles of 23 oil companies trading in Nigeria are not known, according to data from the Corporate Affairs Commission. The chairman of the committee, Honorable Mustafa Ibrahim Aliyu, at the resumed hearing of the committee with a couple of oil companies in attendance to explain their role in the deal with the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, NMPC Limited, said that they have serious questions to answer. Aliu, who read the list containing the names of the individual companies, explained that a communication from the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, on the request of the committee came back without any information on the affected companies. At the bottom of that document was a statement that was shocking to me and annoying to me. So when I said that there was no forced subsidy and all the evidences came out to corroborate that fact that there was no forced subsidy in the first place and that there was no need to increase any pump price of petrol, because even with the old price of 185, 195 naira per liter, NMPC was already making a profit of over 100 naira per liter. 
at 195 nmpc was making a profit of over 100 naira per liter the studies are there the empirical data are there in the document that was done that was presented by uh, dr agbo it was stated there clearly but since nobody will believe since mainstream media will not believe and the tinobu administration kept pretending as if there was a false subsidy that they removed we continued only to find that the house of representatives had set up an ad hoc committee to investigate this whole DSDP arrangement of the NNPC and they had investigated this subsidy regime and they came to some conclusions and part of it is this annoying one that I'll read to you right now that Tinubu was made aware of that Buhari was made aware of yet they still went ahead to dance to the tune of the World Bank and IMF to increase pump price of petrol, to privatize, to devalue Nigeria's Naira, to increase the school fees of university and unity schools in the name of signing the student loan bill, to privatize Nigerian company in the name of signing electricity bill. They were just doing all manner of policies to play and dance to the tune of the IMF and the World Bank. They still went ahead despite knowing what I'm going to read to you now. Look at it. Earlier, the committee quizzed representatives of Sahara Energy Resources Limited, Oando PLC, Hyde, and AA Rano, where they took turns to explain contract deals with the NNPC, saying they only lifted crude oil in the direct sale, direct purchase scheme and were not part of the subsidy payment. The oil marketers that were part of the DSDP arrangement, these companies I just mentioned, the Oando, A. A. Rano, Sahara Resources Limited, they were part of the DSDP arrangement. Now they have come out to say, oh, we only lifted crude oil to give to the refining component of their consortia. And then this consortia brought back refined petrol to give to NMPC, which NMPC now sold to them that they were not part of any fuel subsidy payment. So what we were even going to send out emails for, for them to confirm to Nigeria, they have already confirmed to the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee that they were not part of any subsidy payment. So the House of Representatives already knew. The chairman of that House of Representatives, Honorable Mustafa Ibrahim Aliu from Sokoto State, is still a member of the 10th National Assembly. He's still there. The whole National Assembly, they were aware that there was no fuel subsidy payment made. They were. Oando PLC is headed by Wale Tinubu, Tinubu's nephew. Definitely, Tinubu is aware. From what the former governor of Bauchi said, Buari is aware. So, Buari is aware. Tinubu is aware and they still chose to increase the pump price of petrol in the name of fuel subsidy removal that did not exist. How wicked can a person be? How wicked can a government be? How wicked? Tinubu knew that there was no fuel subsidy made. Tinubu knew. APC knew. In fact, PDP knew. The members of these tent NAS, they knew. They were the ones that conducted the ad hoc committee Senate hearing to prove fair subsidy regime. They were the ones that conducted it and came up with this conclusion where they were told categorically by Sahara Energy Resources, Oando PLC, AA Rano, that they were only involved in lifting crude oil in the direct sale, direct purchase scheme. That they were not part of the fuel subsidy payment. These are the same major marketers whom NMPC claimed that they paid subsidy payments to. These same oil marketers have come to say that they did not receive fuel subsidy. They have come out to exonerate themselves. So if the marketers that are responsible for this DSDP arrangement say they did not receive fuel subsidy, who then did NMPC pay fuel subsidy to? Who then did the federal government pay those 4.2 trillion in 2022, the 3 trillion in six months of 2023, the 3 trillion of 2021, and the 1 trillion of 2020? Who did they pay those monies to? And rather than go after the people who fraudulently collected those money, the Tinubu administration thought it best to punish Nigerians 
by increasing the price of petrol just to please the IMF and the World Bank. Making Nigerians go through untold hardship, untold hardship, unnecessary hardship. We demand justice. The price for the petrol, the pump price of petrol must be returned back to 195 Naira, at which price the NNPC was already making a 100 Naira profit. It must be returned to reduce and reverse the inflation. If the Tinubu administration has any aorta of humanity left in them, they should revert it and rather go after the people that have fraudulently collected this so-called first subsidy payment. So the Tinubu administration, if you have any humanity left in you, if you're not just wicked and just enjoying the, the suffering that you have brought upon Nigerians unnecessarily, then you should revert the price of petrol back to the original 195 and go after these, these rogues that were collecting money for subsidy payment for fuel that never existed.